time now for our weekly news segment. Hey guys, and welcome to the news section. I hope that you had a good week. This time we're going to get straight into the news section by discussing a bill approved by lawmakers in France that will allow uh, the police to secretly access the cameras, microphones, and locations of suspects via their mobile phones. But it's not just limited to their, to their phone, uh, mobile phones. Uh, it covers laptops, cars, and other connected objects as well. Um, so they can essentially remotely activate a camera, microphone, and GPS of their phones and other devices. Lawmakers agreed late on Wednesday, July um, 5th, and the MPs in President Emmanuel Macron's camp inserted an amendment limiting the use of remote spying to when justified by the nature and seriousness of the crime. And for a strictly proportional duration, also added by Dupont Moretti, that we're far away from the totalitarianism of 1984 and people's lives will be saved. Now, pay attention to the wordings. and um, People's lives will be saved. You need this thing. Essentially, everybody's going to be surveilled and um, your phone and your devices will just have an on off switch to which they can um, remove your privacy. It's like being in your house, but they have the key to your house and they can get inside whenever uh, they want. Do you feel safe? <laughs> you don't really feel safe with that. And it's not going to be used just just for this purpose as well. It's, it's so essentially, it, it is 1984. It's like with CBDCs in, in, uh, in the UK, US and other countries, they discussed that, um, yeah, and of the, in the EU as well, the digital euro, um, they were discussing that, yeah, you're gonna have privacy and, but kind of not really, because if you do anything, then we'll be able to off switch your privacy and then we'll be able to see what you do. So um, yeah, this is not good, but uh, it's been passed and um yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting but um so then that means that your devices are always of course possible to spy on you but now they can just do it but i mean they probably were already spying on you before if they really wanted to of course and now it's just legal um but then let's talk about talking about kill, kill switches uh the eu finalizes data act with a kill switch for smart contracts um, so this, in this data act, they're talking about the kill switching for smart contracts. If it's, if they're not deemed to be safe, they can be, you know, uh, terminated. And they also talk about, of course, the digital Euro aiming to make it a widely accepted and easily, um, uh, accept, accessible form of payment. Um, and it will allow individuals to obtain digital euros through their bank upon request, ensures easy accessibility and prevents citizens from being left behind. Wow, such a nice thing. Free basic digital euro services, privacy protection. Not, you're not going to get any privacy at all. Um, and offline payments. Wow, this sounds uh, really good. I think I'm not going to use it at all. Um, but uh, the EU did finalize this data act. And yeah, another, <laughs> another act that is not um, really good for human population. Um, then... So this is Christine Lagarde. Uh, she's a European Central Bank president. This is a video for, for the people watching on, on Twitter spaces. She said that inflation has pretty much come out of, from nowhere, right? Like we didn't have inflation and we woke up and like, huh, okay, 10% inflation. Okay, well, wow, eggs are more expensive. Wow, uh, the gas is more expensive all of a sudden, right? They came from nowhere. Like they haven't done anything at all, of course. Uh, they just printed trillions of euros and had negative interest rates for years. Uh, but of course, like nothing causes inflation, you know, it's like um, a diamond is worth so much because it's only so much of it in the world. But if diamonds were growing on everybody's lawns, then, you know, it wouldn't be worth as much. So obviously, the more you print in uh, a currency, the more you're going to inflate the currency and the less is going to be. But I guess uh, that um, they didn't take basic economy. Uh, you, you don't even need to take economy classes. Like it's just basic uh basic common sense but um if i were to be on television and know what really caused inflation and play dumb that you just pretty much came from another i would i would not feel uh, i i couldn't even do it just these people don't have values as human beings it's absolutely absolutely uh, crazy and they, they want you to not have values as well that's what ultimately they want to have because when you have values as a human being you don't allow these things to happen you rebel and this is why we're here, you know, using Monero. Um, then, in case you're still, <laughs> in case you're still not sure if CBDCs are coming, India negotiates cross-border CBDC payments with global central banks. What is interesting is that they are saying that 
cross-border payments will also become much quicker, more seamless, and very cost-effective. That is another area where a lot of attention needs to be given. We are constantly in dialogue with other central banks that have introduced or are introducing CBDCs. Essentially, we do need a global solution that is quick, seamless, very cost-effective, right? So I made a transaction to Romania yesterday, for example, from here, the U.S., and uh, yeah, the fees were not nice. <laughs> so uh, it needs to be cost-effective, low fees, everything fast. You know, like it takes a couple of days to send something globally. And if you transact more money, then it's just a pain, a pain uh, to do so. But uh, something with Monero, it's just fast. So, you know, it's instant. The fees are very, very low. The more it's used, the lower the fees. So uh, we need a solution eventually. CBDC is, is not the solution, but when countries say, say that, uh, we may have CBDCs, maybe not. We're going to test it. No, we're going to have something in place eventually. And it is going to be CBDC. Uh, those are just lies to show that, oh, we're uncertain. Oh, but eventually we made it to CBDC. No, CBDC is the end goal. And everybody needs to understand this. The Chinese city of Jinan accepts CBDC payments for bus rides now. Uh, so China is using CBDC. Nigeria is using CBDC. They forced their citizens in Nigeria to use the CBDC. It has it had recovered uh, over in a uh, different uh, episode in the past. Uh, the Ina era, which is their CBDC in Nigeria, had a 0.5% adoption, like nobody was using it. And that was very high because they just taken away the cash from the circulation. Um, then, you know, something like Monero also helps. So it helps with privacy, privacy invasion, right? What we kind of discussed in the beginning of, of uh, the new section. Um, then it's very easy to, to transact with people, which is very important. But also Monero is very stable as well. And it's very stable compared to other currencies because uh, cryptocurrencies, because uh, people actually use it. So it's used in circulation. It's not the pump and dump for people just buying speculation in the cell, you know. So it's much, it's very stable. So this brings me to Argentina's inflation is helping all coins in the crypto market. Argentina has a very high, high inflation. It's hyperinflating over, you know, 150%, which is a lot. The co their money is worth nothing, right? Uh, which does help the altcoin market because the Argentinian pesos are then transformed into different altcoins by the people. But, um, you know, if they learn about Monero, they can get their Argentinian, Argentinian pesos, which are not worth much, and go into something like uh, like Monero. Now, talking about Monero, uh, I've seen this video, which is really cool, by Taxuro, um, which is a cake wallet sneak peek. So if you are on Twitter, you can't, you can't see unless you go on YouTube. Uh, but essentially, it's different themes for Kick Wallet because right now we, I think we have only three, and um, yeah, the, the new ones look uh, pretty cool. Dark mode with uh, uh, yellow and all kinds. So, well, it's kind of like orange yellow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm excited for the new Kick Wallet update. Now, as you may know, there's a new Twitter competitor from Meta, which is Freds, and of course. <laughs> Uh, there's an image saying that data link to you and it's everything financial info, contact info, user content, browsing history, uses data, diagnostic, health and fitness, purchase, location, contact, search history, identifiers like, you know, IDs, passports, whatever, sensitive information, other data, literally everything that you have on your phone is going to be collected and linked to your identity by Meta. Uh, but if you use Instagram and other apps, they, they're already doing that. So I guess adding Fred is not really going to do much more. Um, now, if you want to kind of relax, take a deep breath, then you should go on the Monero community on, on Twitter and talk to like-minded people as well and share the things that annoy you, annoy you in the world or, you know, Monero memes or whatever you want to discuss uh, Monero related. So go on Twitter and look up for the Monero community and uh, join. We have 374 people so far. And also be kind and respectful. Keep tweets on topic and explore and share. Then Just WP is a privacy focused WordPress host that now accepts uh, Monero. So if you go to justwp.io, it's your anonymous WordPress host, get your WordPress site online. Today they say with a free domain name, SSL, and unlimited email addresses, no personal information required in seven minutes for $59.99 per year, and you can pay in Monero. Check it out. And I think we have two more things. Now, one last thing, actually. So the last thing that I want to bring up for this new section uh, for this week is, uh, so this person uh, ordered the Mastering Monero book. You can get the PDF online. That's what I did. I read it online. Um, you can get the book as well. So we have the first edition. I think there's, there's a second edition as well of the Mastering Monero. 
uh, which goes in detail of how Monero works. So I highly recommend it if you want to refresh your knowledge about Monero. But then we also have the Monero standard, which you can pre-order now. It's going to come soon. Uh, it's written by my good friend, the Stoic Coiner. It's going to come soon. He's been working on it for a long, long time. Very, very hard. It's going to be a great book, so make sure that you pre-order it and read it when it does come out. You can follow on, on Twitter to find more information about that as well. Uh, guys, this was this week's new section, as always. Um, you can see my name over here. If you want to send me anything for a new section, if you want me to cover anything, uh, I think I have the same ad for Telegram as well, if you want to send me uh, news articles. The links are going to be in the description. Stay tuned for the rest of the show. You know, we have the price report, which is awesome, dev section, the whole show. Um, so the guest section as well. So yeah, stay tuned and we'll see you next week, guys. Have a good week. Bye.